This is our brand spanking new E36 off-road rally project. And unfortunately, we got an automatic transmission at the moment. So today we're gonna swap out this automatic for the more desirable manual transmission. And along the way, we'll find out whether or not it's worth all the time, effort, and money it takes. I think it's gonna be. Well, I'm Zach, this is Money Pit, let's get shifting. Thanks to eBay Motors for sponsoring this new season of Money Pit. Did you know eBay Motors is one of the only websites where you can actually buy a car and all the parts you need? Facts, take this transmission for example. All we had to do was enter in the vehicle's info and boom, like magic, we found the exact part we needed. And you can trust that it's the exact part you need because eBay has its proprietary web feature called Fitment which guarantees any part you order fits the car you're searching for. So don't waste your time online. Get exactly what you need by going to the link in the description below. Now, let's get back to our newest money pit. All right, if you guys have been sticking with us the past couple weeks, you already know about this car. We got an E36 and we're gonna be modifying it to be an off-road rally car. And I'm super excited about it. Now, of course, you can just drive a stock car off-road to some degree of success, but we wanna go a step further. And last week, we took this out to the desert and drove it around pretty hard. And one of the first things that was apparent was that this automatic transmission is a bit of a hindrance. It doesn't really do what you want it to do when you want it to do it. And in terms of a competitive setting or a racing setting like you know rally racing you want to be able to put the power down when you want it where you want it how you want it and that's what you can do with a manual transmission and that kind of begs the question why we even bought an automatic car in the first place am i just hard up for episodes well no not really the fact is that the e36 market is insane these days and it's hard to find a five-speed example for a decent price that hasn't been absolutely abused. So if you wanna pay not an arm and a leg and get an E36 that hasn't necessarily been abused, well, you're kinda of looking at automatic cars these days. So if I've convinced you that an automatic E36 is a good way to get into an E36 or really any project car, as long as you can then swap it to a manual transmission, well, you might be wondering, how do you go about swapping it to a manual transmission? What do you need? Well, you need this stuff. Obviously, you're gonna need a manual transmission itself, but that's just the start of it. Then you need a way to couple it to the engine, and an automatic transmission doesn't use a clutch and flywheel like a manual transmission, so you'll need a clutch and flywheel. Uh, you're also gonna need the proper mounting stuff for your new manual transmission. So we've got our transmission mount with uh, some poly bushings. Then you're also gonna need your clutch hydraulic system, the master, the slave, and the pedal. And the lines that go in between to connect all that, you know, the thing that actuates your clutch, the actual hydraulic action that you impose with your foot. So we've got all that stuff. Then you'll also need a new drive shaft to connect your new manual transmission to your diff. Uh, usually the length of the manual transmission is different than the automatic, often shorter, so your drive shaft will ultimately be longer. Then you need all the shifting components so you can actually row through your gears. And you know, depending on your platform, you'll need other little odds and ends, little pieces of hardware, little bushings, that kind of thing. And there's plenty of that on the E36. We'll go through each of those things as we install. But this is the meat and potatoes of it. These are the big parts. And this is pretty much what you'll need for any manual transmission swap. The trans itself, the clutch and flywheel, the mounting stuff, the shifter stuff, the drive shaft, and the pedal set. So let's see if that proves to be true or if I'm forgetting anything. I hope I'm not. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do to get started on this project is actually take apart the interior while I'm still good and clean. Uh, so this whole shifter area is gonna need to come apart. The center console needs to come out, and I figure I might as well do that while the hands are still not so grimy. So we'll start in here, then we'll get the car up off the ground and go underneath. We are officially done with this piece. And that makes me feel nice. Oh, wow. 
This stuff doesn't come out quite as easily as it does on a Miata, but it is out. And now we're down to our ugly automatic shifting mechanism. All right, so we got the whole automatic shifter and about half of the dash out. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty much all the meticulous work, uh, all the tedious stuff. And from here on out, it's pretty much just scooping out elbow grease and smearing it all over. So that's what we're about to do. I'm gonna get this thing nice and tall on jack stands and then we'll go to work getting the automatic transmission itself out of here. Now, this part of the job is never very much fun and it's easy to kind of get complacent, but you're gonna be getting under this thing a lot once it's up in the air. So don't get complacent, pay attention to how you do this or else you could kill yourself. All right, well now we got the car up in the air, as you can tell, because I'm under it. Uh, so now it's time to start getting that automatic transmission out. So we gotta get some stuff out of the way. First thing I'm gonna do is pull this brace, then get the exhaust off, then some heat shield, then the drive shaft, and then we're getting close to actually touching the transmission. You know, I meant to do this uh, first thing when I jacked the car up, but at least I remembered before, you know. It's spilling everywhere. Yeah, you know, I don't even know if these spill out with the way the output of the trans is, but I wanna find out the hard way. All these automatic cars also have an automatic transmission cooler. So that is an additional thing that I'll have to remove. Probably no big deal. I can see the lines right here. Uh, gotta go though, got to go. So, look out for a transmission cooler. All right, so now I am gonna take inventory of all the bell housing bolts I can see, so I can kinda put a game plan together and determine, you know, when is the right time to start tipping the uh, transmission. I'll probably get as many bolts as I can easily get off as is off, then we'll come back here and remove the trans bracket and hold this puppy up with just the jack. Then once it's being supported at the rear by the jack, I can let the jack down or up, depending on what I need, to tilt the whole engine and transmission to hopefully give me a little better access to some tough to reach hardware. I mean, there's really nothing left to it, but to do it. So, shall we? Okay, so now we've got all the bell housing bolts at least loose. I've got two left in just to keep the transmission from falling out before I'm ready, but I'm just about ready. I've got my handy dandy transmission jack here. Now you could do this with just a regular jack, but it's a little sketchy. Uh, one of these makes it a little less sketchy. So I'm gonna ideally wrap this chain around the top and lash it to my platform here. Put the platform nice and tight up on the bottom of the trans and wedge this puppy out. No big deal. There she is, as easy as that. I mean, honestly, yeah, there was some elbow grease involved, but it's kind of to be expected, but it's definitely doable. See? So now we've got a lot of stuff to put back in. And the first thing we're gonna install is the actual clutch pedal itself. I guess it's just a vent. Does that make sense? All right, so we got the old pedals out, ready to put the new ones in. So it's more than just bolting the pedals in, you gotta run some lines. So one line, this soft line, will come up to our brake reservoir here and catch some brake fluid to come down to our clutch master cylinder. That's what this system operates on, brake fluid. So there's a little nipple hanging off the backside of our reservoir here that is not open. It needs to be cut so that uh, fluid can flow through it. So I'm gonna cut that and then this line will come up to that reservoir. Then this hard line will go out and down to the transmission, to the slave cylinder. And that's what will operate our clutch. So we'll get those lines run, get these puppies bolted in, and then we're off to the races.
My favorite place to work on a car is in the driver's footwell. There's plenty of space. You can lounge super relaxed like, and it's, you know, therapeutic for your back and neck. That said, all the nuts and bolts are tight for the new pedal set. So now with that done, we are fully over the hump. We're putting manual stuff in the car. So now it's really time to hit the ground. So next I'm gonna go under the car and pull off the automatic flex plate so that I can install that lightweight flywheel and our clutch kit. Now this would be a great time to replace your rear main seal. However, that puppy is bone dry and pretty fresh at 93,000 miles. So I'm gonna leave it. So let's jam a flywheel on there. Uh, don't you need to put the pilot bearing in? Yes, I do need to put the pilot bearing in. Thank you for reminding me. All right, so to push our pilot bearing in, first I cleaned out the hole that it's gonna go in with a little Scotch-Brite. I'll also put a little bit of lube on it, like a little WD-40 or something. And then the real trick is to find something to push it in with. Sockets are pretty much always gonna work, easy thing to go with. But if you're pushing on the inner race, you're really gonna damage the roller bearings in there, or the balls, rather. So you just wanna make sure you're pushing on the outer race and everything will be fine. So, like that. So that's cleaned out, spray a little lube, tap it home. No big deal. Good. Uh, that's a pilot bearing installed, and we didn't even forget about it. Now where's that flywheel? Ah! Oh, yeah. All right, so I just put two bolts in and evenly tightened them down just to pull the flywheel all the way onto the crankshaft. Now, with the rest of the bolts, I'm gonna put a little bit of orange thread locker. This is high strength, but removable. I love this stuff. I'll put it on the, the next six bolts, and then I'll pull out these first two and add some thread locker. You definitely wanna put thread locker on your flywheel bolts. You don't want your flywheel coming off. So as you torque down these bolts, you're naturally just gonna spin the engine, which makes it pretty hard to torque them down. Now they make tools that'll lock into the flywheel teeth and you can attach to the engine. You can also use a pry bar. Now these teeth are only responsible for starting the car. They only interact with your starter. So don't be too worried about a tiny mar here and there. It's not that big of a deal, but you're gonna have to do something to keep it from moving. Okay, now that we've got our flywheel installed and torqued down, it's time to install the clutch disc and the pressure plate. But before we do that, we gotta make sure that we clean off the pressure plate's mating surface and the flywheel. Most of this kind of stuff is shipped with a light coating of oil to keep it from rusting, but you gotta make sure you get that off before you install it. Clutches don't like oil. All right, with all that stuff clean, now it's time to install our clutch disc. And you gotta pay attention to which way you put it on. There's a right way and a wrong way. But the good news is that usually it'll tell you what's what. You can see here it says gearbox side. So this side of the clutch disc needs to face the gearbox. And I've got my clutch alignment tool, which is necessary for aligning this thing. You won't get your transmission installed if you're not using one of these. This end just goes into the pilot bearing and this end locates your disc. Keeps it all centered. So with the hardware started, now we're gonna tighten it all down evenly to tighten our pressure plate in an even manner. Now we torque. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh. Okay, and with that, we're ready to jam a transmission in here. Let's go get it ready. We gotta prepare it just a bit. <laughs> Donut is looking for new co Sorry, can you go back to the beginning? You guys, Donut is looking for new hosts. Do you love cars? Do you know how to work on cars? Do you have a potentially unhealthy desire to be the center of attention? Perfect, then go here or click the link in the description below. We're looking for the funniest person in the pit crew, the most hilarious person in the shop. If this is you, submit to be a host. If this sounds like someone you know, encourage them to submit to be a host. The last time we did this, we met both Zach Job 
and Jeremiah. Thank you guys so much for watching my audition. Hello, Donut Media. My name is Zach Joe. You could seriously be next. So go ahead and click that link or send it to a friend and let's make videos about cars together. Goodbye. All right, before we go jamming this new old transmission into the car, I want to do a couple things to ensure proper operation. So uh, we're just going to clean a few things up and put a little light coating of grease in some critical spots to keep things from squeaking or making any weird noises. And we're going to put a new throw out bearing in place. Just the things you need to do before you actually put a transmission in. Because if you put it in and your old throw out bearing was bad, boy, would you hate yourself. How do I know? Disengage, engage, disengage, engage. I'm also going to throw the new trans mounts on while we got it out of the car. All right, so with that, that's all the prep work we needed to do for the transmission, and it wasn't very much. That was pretty easy. So now we just got to put the transmission in the car. Let's hope it's just as easy. That's one way to do it. <laughs> So that's what connects to the bottom of the shifter and actually does the shifting on the trans shimmin. And that'll connect to the shifter, shifter will drop in here, sweet. Now it's actually ready to go in. Or so I say. Eh? Eh? Who knows? I think I'm on my last bell housing bolt, the last bolt uh, for the starter. And then, once that's done, you can pop the shifter arm into place, get the rear trans bracket back on, hold the trans up, and then do things like drive shaft and shifter from the cabin. And we gotta put our slave cylinder on and connect it to the lines we installed earlier. And we're in the home stretch though, you could say. Okay, now that we've got our shifter connected to the transmission, it's time to actually mount the new shifter to the shift arm. So I just need to cinch this collar underneath the lip on this arm, and uh, we'll be in business. Okay, so the shifter assembly itself is installed. Now we just gotta put our shifter on. The uh, final piece of the puzzle, the most exciting piece. So let's see. Yeah, we're going full rally all the way up, baby. All right, it's all coming together. All right, now I'm just gonna go down below and crack the bleeder on the slave cylinder, we'll let some fluid flow through, then we'll bleed it, and then our clutch should work. Not bad, not too bad. So the last thing we gotta do here before we can fire the car up is a little bit of hacking. So this was an automatic car, and automatic cars have a computer that controls the automatic transmission. So we just have to take that computer out and basically pull its brain out. And then we'll be able to start the car up, and we'll probably have a check engine light, but we'll be able to fix that with a scan tool later. But we do need to take out this chip out of the uh, trans ECU to be able to start this thing up at all. So... Okay. Obviously, this is not the way to work on an ECU that you care about, but I don't care about this thing. I don't need it to do anything. In fact, that's why I'm trying to turn it off. And with that, the automatic transmission's brain is no more. So now we can actually put this back in the car and uh, everything should be fine. It won't know that it doesn't have an automatic transmission. Well, I, like I said, I think we will get a check engine light, but this would have stopped the car from starting because there's a lot of stuff that should be there that isn't anymore, according to this. So, we'll put this back in the car for safekeeping. And now, it's time to fire this pig up. 
Neutral, okay, no clutch. Wow, what a babe. Wow, we did it. Fourth gear, baby, fourth gear. All right, well, at first it seems like everything is working. So I'm ready to call this a win and I think it's time to put things on the ground and go for a little test drive. What do you think? Yeah, yeah? Let's do it. Feels like a manual car. Hey, I need a garage door opener. Everything feels smooth out the gates. Just sitting in there, the uh, transmission shifts really nicely, nice and smooth. Get a little extra noise because uh, this is open. Ah, but that feels good. Clutch pedal feels nice. It seems to be doing its job. Yep, shifts good. Ah, and you know, something that I'm really excited about that I haven't actually talked about yet is we're getting a little bit of a, almost a bump in power with this swap. You see this car has, uh, well it had an automatic transmission and this car with the automatic transmission came with a 391 diff. Now that's a pretty short ratio. It works great with the automatic, but with the manual transmission, it ends up being a pretty short ratio. Now what that means is that this thing is gonna wind out a lot sooner. Our top speed is gonna drop, but we're, it's gonna feel a lot torquier while we get to that top speed. So even though we didn't change anything with the engine, this thing got a lot faster uh, in terms of like, you know, the kind of driving we're gonna be doing uh, off-road. You know, we're gonna be not really looking for top speed. I don't care about going 140 miles an hour. This thing will probably top out around 120 now but it's gonna get there a lot quicker than it did with the automatic transmission. So, since we've got the manual and the 391 diff, this thing feels a lot quicker. Sure, it wasn't easy, there was a lot of grunt work. I got as dirty as I've been in a while, but now I've got a manual E36 and it's in great shape. This car, as is, would probably cost me easily $2,500 to $3,500 more than I paid for the car. And I paid less than that in parts. Sure, it took some time, but you know, you learn a thing or two along the way and it's kind of fun. So I would say that buying an automatic E36 and manual swapping it is a great way to get yourself the E36 of your dreams. This used to be an automatic and now it's not. What could be better? So I hope you guys agree. Let me know in the comments what you think. If manual swapping a car is worth all the time and money it takes. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next Wednesday. In the meantime, don't forget to go follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and follow Dona at Donut Media. And please don't forget to like this video. It's how YouTube knows that we're doing at least a decent job at our job, which is making videos. So please like it, subscribe to the channel, and come back next Wednesday for more E36 stuff. Traction control. Oh, what a loser. Have you ever dreamed of a world where cars and ideas create vision? Vision, vision, create vision. Where collectibles are not only collected, they are felt. Felt, felt. Introducing the latest innovation in cars and collectibles. Stocky. Stocky is a first of its kind designer collectible, the ultimate gift for a car nerd and an officially licensed Acura product. So turns out that creating a collectible is not easy 
or cheap. It's been a very long process, but we're really stoked with how it turned out and we hope that you guys are too. Just like everything with Donut, the only way that this is successful is through you guys. I mean, you guys are the only reason we're anything at all. So we're launching this on Kickstarter. We wanted to make something the perfect size to display on your desk, next to your TV, in your dorm room, in the shop, wherever. We explored a ton of different deformations before finally landing on this, something that we think is the perfect mix of fun and stylized while still staying true to the original car. Speaking of the car, for Stocky 001, we knew that we had to go with one of the most iconic and legendary tuner cars of all time, the DC2 Integra Type R. We're launching this in a bunch of sick different colorways, everything from OEM finishes like Phoenix Yellow, authentic Honda Championship White, and Nighthawk Black Pearl, to crazy versions like Primer Gray, Glow in the Dark, Translucent. We're even gonna make a gold one, like actual gold from the ground. You only got two weeks left to get the launch edition. Get yourself a stocky. Get your friend a stocky. Let's take it to the moon, baby. 